Well, hello everyone. My name is Edward McCarver, and we're going to be talking about an event that's coming up in Wallingford early next month. The Wallingford Community Theater is presenting The Wizard of Oz on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Lyman Hall High School here in town. The curtain rises at 7.30 p.m. Now, tickets are $20 general admission, $15 for children and seniors. Tickets are available at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Wallingford Town Hall, at the door, or online at brownpapertickets.com. And it gives me pleasure to uh, welcome back someone uh, who's no stranger to the set here, uh, Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles. Uh, Mio, how, how are you? I'm good, Ed. How are you? How are you? Good, Thanks for having us. Good to be back. It's been a while. It's been a while. Been We're a while. happy to be back. And it's nice to kind of have things back to normal now that COVID is hopefully yes. behind us. Yes. And uh, to get back on a normal routine, one of the routines is... Uh, Late in July to meet here and, and, and plug what's coming up. So it's good good to do that. So, first question right out of the box. What made you choose The Wizard of Oz? Perhaps one of the most popular movies of all time. It I don't is. think there's anyone who probably has not seen The Wizard of Oz. Right. But what made you choose it? And, and tell us the process of, of, of choosing of a play choosing. like that. Okay. So we chose The Wizard of Oz. Because with COVID, we stopped doing the big musicals that we always do. And typically we have like 100 to 200 in the cast, two to 300 in the crews. And COVID just kind of stopped everything. Our last show was Matilda. So I wanted to pick something that was very kid-friendly, very family-friendly, that would give lots and lots of people of all ages an opportunity to be part of it. Um, or to come and see it. So that's how we landed on The Wizard of Oz, and we were very happy to secure the rights, which is a much more tricky business now. It mm. takes a lot longer. Things have changed in the, in the, the land of the stage. It, it's not rights. just, hey, here's a nice play, well, let's do it. No, uh, you have to apply. You have to, Absolutely, yeah. you have to apply um, for a license and royalties. And um, then you have to wait. Typically, we used to have to wait maybe four weeks for a response from uh, the company. There are two big ones now, Concord Theatricals and MTI. And they pretty much have bought up during COVID all the smaller, like Samuel French and Rogers and Hammerstein Library. All of them are all belong to one of these two big companies. And it was taking months for them to get back to us. Um, so we were keeping our fingers crossed. We actually applied for a few shows. One was denied because a professional troupe was doing it within six months and 500 uh, miles. And the rest were available, but we, we were happy to get Wizard of Oz. Everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. Um, it's a challenge, though, because the script is actually a screenplay. Um, they sell it as, as a stage play, but it's written um, as, as a screenplay. So um, it really challenged our stage actors, our crews, but um, they're magnificent people and we did it. So <laughs> Good. Now I know summer productions are usually performed in early August. I know Matilda and Mary Poppins. Uh, there was an exception last year for 1776, but right. uh, we'll get right. to that. Um, uh, how far in advance do you start preparing for an August opening? Well, you really have to talk um, before COVID and after COVID. Before COVID, we would maybe plan six months or so before we, we uh, did a show. If it's a big musical, we'll, we'll go into rehearsal at least six months on some level. Now, we'll be meeting um, in the beginning of September, our, our board and our um, staff, and we'll be mapping out and uh, licensing the entire season um for the coming year year and a half okay. and we'll get we want to get that all locked down early so that we can get right into it yeah okay. just briefly last year the Wanfi community theater did something a little bit different uh they did 1776 in early june yes in honor of the town's 350th birthday celebration how diff different was it preparing for 1776 than it was for uh, for us well when we began auditions, as everybody in town knows, when we began auditions for 1776, it was pre-COVID. So we actually had a read-through and a musical run-through with all the lead actors, and they came from all over the state. And then COVID hit in March, 
and we shut down. So I kept contacting the cast and we had, to, are you still interested? You know, are you, are you going to hang? And they, every single one of them stayed with us. Every single one of them. And I know they had other, other opportunities. Um, we had some professional, semi-professional, not equity, um, but, um, and everybody from town and everybody hung tight with it. So I was tremendously grateful for that. That's, yeah. That says a lot about their integrity and I appreciate it. It was. And then we finally got back together again um, six months before the June, hoping we could proceed right through performances, and we did. Good. Yeah, the time was awesome. We're talking with uh, Mary Ellen Eccles. We're talking about the uh, Wizard of Oz, which the Wallingford Community Theater will be presenting August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Lyman Hall High School. Curtain rises at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $20, general admission, $15, children and seniors. Again, tickets are available at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Wallingford Town Hall, at the door the evening of the performance, or online at brownpapertickets.com. Now, in addition to yourself, uh, Mary Ellen, we have a couple of, uh, couple of participants, a couple of uh, actors. We have uh, Savannah Gallagher and Charlie Forte. Charlie, you are, uh, what is your role? I am the Emerald City Guard and one of the farm hands at the beginning and the end of the show. Okay. And Savannah, you are what's what's your role again now? Oh, I just play this little girl named Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, I, I have to ask before I ask for the question. What's what's it like playing oh, Dorothy? It is a dream come true. Um, I've loved The Wizard of Oz since I was little. Um, the first time I watched it, I was terrified of it. (laughs) (laughs) But I've grown to love it more than I could possibly think I could. Um, my cast is great. My director is great. Um, but becoming, becoming Dorothy has been one of the greatest opportunities I could have ever received in my entire life. Good. And I'm so grateful. Good. Let me begin, and, and I'll ask this first of you, Savannah, and then Charlie, I'll, I'll come to you. When did you first get involved in theater? So I've loved music and dancing and singing my entire life. Um, just ask my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my first production was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with the Wallingford Community Theater, and I was eight years old, I remember my mom coming into my room being like, she found an ad on Facebook, and she came into my room and was just like, Savannah, I found this thing called Charlie and the Truck Factory, it's a play, do you want to do it? And it was a very excited yes, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie, how, uh, how did you get involved in the theater world? Uh, I have been at this since winter of 2011 back at James H. Moran Middle School right here in town uh, with a little production called High School Musical. You may have heard of it. (laughs) Uh, I was just part of the ensemble, but I enjoyed it, and here we've been since. This is now my second production with Wallingford Community Theater. Nice. Let let me ask uh, both of you, and you kind of touched on it briefly, what are some of the past performances you have been in, and is there any particular favorite performances? And Savannah, I'll I'll start with you. Uh, I've been in a bunch of performances. I think this is my 10th or 11th show I've ever been in. Um, I have to say this is my favorite. Um, But I think some of my other favorites have been playing Rebecca Gibbs in Our Town. And I think Mary Poppins being a chimney sweep was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Also Beauty and the Beast because we got to go to the Sondheim Awards and that was really fun. And our bell was just at the Jimmy Awards as well. And Charlie? Uh, For myself... Uh, I've also been in quite a few productions. Uh, I was Bobby in a chorus line. Uh, let's see, uh, LeFou in Beauty and the Beast at uh, Sheehan back in 2017, which I was nominated for a Halo Award for, and then Marius in Les Mis. If I may ask you a question, let's not sell you short here. You are also our scarecrow in our production. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my wife says I'm perfect for it because I have no brains. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, I am... Uh, I am involved in, in The Wizard of Oz. I am uh, Ray Bolger Jr., I guess. Yeah. You're, you're wonderful. It is, it, it, you do it, a great it's job. a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's, uh, but it's, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm having a ball. And one of these days, I'll remember all my lines. 
Um, let me ask you, uh, Mary Ellen, it's, it's been a busy spring and summer for the community theater now that hopefully COVID is officially behind yes. us. Um, the Repertory Theater performed uh, Rosencrantz and Gilderstern are dead um, about a month ago at the uh, Parisi Auditorium in town. Um, for those that might not know, what is the difference between Repertory Theater and, and a full theater group? So in the summer, which is our biggest production of the year, that's open. It's um, fully accessible. If you want to be part of it, you're part of it. There's, there's no cutting. Repertory is not always, but usually more um, experienced actors. They tend to be a tight group. Um, we're always open. We're not, I, I'm totally anti-click, but um, they, they work together. And if you're in repertory, it's usually a much, much, much smaller group. Um, you can play several, as, as you both were in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, um, which was Matt Bennett, our, shout out to Matt, he, he's our tech director, he's also a very fine actor. That was his um, directing debut, and he did a great job with that. So it's, it's very tight, and you could be doing anything and everything in that. Um, and the, the roles from play to play typically rotate around, sometimes you might be a lead, and the next time you might be a stage manager, you might be running tech, you might be doing costumes. Um, everybody pitches in everywhere um, with that. Um, we always have a little sign somebody put up, um, leave your egos at the door. <laughs> it's such a team sport, it really is. So that's pretty much, repertory is much smaller. Um, we do audition for that. Um, we always invite them, if, if we don't choose them to be in the repertory play we're doing, we always invite them to become <coughs> members and participate in some of the larger events. Um, it's, it's more intense, I think, in the training. Mm -hmm. let, me get, let me get back to the, uh, to the actors here. Um, when performing, do you prefer musicals or a non-musical play? Is there any, any preference in Savannah? I'll start with you. Um, I think. I've had so much fun doing both before, but I think I do prefer musicals just because I've been singing since I, before I could walk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I do prefer musicals. Okay, and Charlie? Did up. <laughs> no, I've been also singing probably after I was walking, but I'm a guy. I'm slower. <laughs> <laughs> And they both have wonderful, wonderful voices. Savannah um, she has done several town events for me and other shows, and I knew she was ready. And Charlie came, our first was Rosencrantz, and then, you know, he, he, we were talking. I said, well, you should think about doing Wizard with us. And I said, it's a musical. And he said, well, actually, mu musicals are more my thing. And then we heard him <coughs> sing. Wait till you hear him sing in The Wizard of Oz. Unbelievable, really phenomenal voices, both of them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let me, uh, let me ask you, um, what's opening night like for Mary Ellen Eccles? Uh, do you have a routine? Or <laughs> are you a nervous wreck? No. You... Um, <coughs> I'm sorry for questioning. I'm, I get nervous in the process preparing for it. I always joke with my cast that every show, I mean, I've been on the stage since I was three. And every, I don't remember that far back. It's a hundred years, but it was like, <laughs> but it was like every show that um, I've done, um, whether I'm a lead in it or or I'm directing it, there's always that night where I will wake up at three o'clock in the morning and think, what made me think I could do this, you know? And I, and I always say, I say very openly, you know, that that. Um, God is the one who brought me to do this. You know, it's a, it's something I want to do for the community. It's it's a gift, and because um, none of us, you know, are on salary or anything. It's just something we really believe in. And I always get the the answer back. Well, you're not doing it. I am. I'm letting you help. So it's just like okay, as long as I'm just helping. <laughs> but I always go through that every time. Um, there's always, I've been, I, fortunately, I've already had that night for this show, so, and I'm still here. So. <laughs> if, if you didn't go through that, and if it's something you go through every year, would you think that maybe... Hopefully I would forget all about it, and I wouldn't think it. about yeah. it, yeah. you know, but I, I, I work, I'm, I'm, 
everybody thinks that being creative is just, you know, loosey-goosey, do what you feel, be very spontaneous and impulsive. It really isn't that at all. If you've studied any of the arts and stuff and gone anywhere with it, it's a lot of, dis lot of discipline, a lot of self-discipline, a lot of hard, hard work, a lot of organization, especially if you're running things. There are so many moving parts to this that if I wasn't organized, it would be just utter chaos. And, and it's not just the stage, it's everything. So I, I'm, I tend to be very organized, very methodical, and, and I'm, communication is huge with me. So I think if you have those things in place. And it, it, it doesn't hurt that your husband was former deputy state auditor for state, so he, <laughs> he, was, he taught me all about Excel sheets. Um, you know, and, and our board has, you know, we have CPAs and lawyers and wonderful, wonderful people from town who, who lend their talents. It's not one person, and that makes me a little calmer. It's, nice. phew, nice. I'm part of a team. <laughs> Again, we're talking with Mary Ellen Eccles and members of the Wanafee Community Theater. The Wanafee Community Theater is presenting The Wizard of Oz, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Lyman Hall High School. Curtain rises at 7.30 p.m. each night. Tickets are $20, general admission, $15 uh, children and seniors. Tickets, again, are available at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Wallingford Town Hall, at the door the night of the performance, or online at brownpapertickets.com. I have to ask the actors here because I'm something I'm struggling with myself. <laughs> How do you memorize lines? Uh, is there any particular, Charlie, I'll start with you. Is, uh, is there any particular technique right that away, you use? Right away, repetition is everything. Just getting it down, repeating it over and over, almost ad nauseum. I'll be at work. And just suddenly saying to myself, as I'm stocking shelves, Oh, I swear this new wagon wheel's smaller than the other three. <laughs> <laughs> I just run the entire scene in my head, trying to get my cues, get everything in place, on point, ready for opening night. Have any of your co-workers said anything when you said that? Uh, I've gotten a lot of blank stares. <laughs> <laughs> And Savannah, do you have, uh, what's your technique for, so for memorizing lines? So I've never really had to memorize lines before this production at such a huge amount. Um, but I actually credit our Tin Man with a lot of my um, strategies as a, how I memorize lines. At the beginning of rehearsals, Bob Bender, uh, shout out to Bob, um, he showed me this app that I can type all of my lines in. It's called Cold Read, and it basically feeds you all your lines like a teleprompter. And I can just be cleaning my room, doing laundry, making dinner, and I can put this up and just write my lines as I'm doing these everyday tasks. And I use it every day, and it's perfect. And I owe a lot to that. Yeah. To Bob Bender. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I, I know in, in for Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, I mean the it was like a term paper yeah. for for those two. And, yeah. And those two actors. Uh, Francis McLaughlin and Wesley Stover, I yeah. believe were, were the actors for, for that. It was just, just phenomenal. Yeah. How they, yeah. they memorize it. And there's so many different ways to memorize or so many different techniques. You have to find what works for you. Like John Fabiani, who's <laughs> our, oh my gosh, if you've seen any of our productions with him, he, he's, he's magnificent. Amazing. He's done a lot of professional theater. He drives up from Watertown to be part. He's the professor and the wizard. And <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's like amazing. He's like amazing. And he just uses repetition. That's his thing. You know, I, yeah. There's like, Lots of different ways, but you have to find what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask the, the actors, um, is there a role you would like to play on stage? I know Dorothy's iconic, but is, is, there, is there a role that you would I mean, kill for to, to <laughs> yeah. go on? Well, I, I wouldn't go as far as killing. <laughs> <laughs> I only drop houses on people. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Not um, people, witches. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, this role, like I said earlier, it's a dream come true. Um, but I've always wanted to be in Les Mis. I would love to do Les Mis as a production. And if I could be in Les Mis and have whatever I wanted handed to me, um, I would love to play Fontaine. Um, also, another big um, 
role of mine that I would love to play is Ariel the Little Mermaid. Um, I've uh, lived and breathed the Little Mermaid <laughs> since I was very young. Yeah. Um, as well as, like, when I was very young, I also loved Annie, and I was obsessed with the idea of being Annie. But now that I'm older, I think it would be really fun for me to kind of step out of my comfort zone and play Miss Hannigan and play a villain yeah. someday. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie? Piggybacking off that, having played LeFou, which is comic relief, but also technically an antagonist of Beauty and the Beast, villain roles are very fun. <laughs> and I tend to gravitate towards that. <laughs> uh a lot of my roles, if I could do Les Mis again, I would. I would go for Thénardier or Javert, both iconic roles in their own right. But then, I know I'll never get these two, so I can say them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either Sweeney Todd or Phantom. Oh, oh right, right, I right. Could totally see I, I gravitate Sweeney. towards the darker. <laughs> Sweeney is so fun. It's iconic. Yeah. Let, let, let me ask all three of you, and, and Mary Ellen, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, comedy or drama, what do you prefer... And what is easier? Okay, so when I was in college majoring in theater, um, I really started to learn the difference between the two. And I do enjoy drama. Comedy is much more difficult because it's all about timing. And your better actors tend to do comedy. And when people who typically do comedy actually do a dramatic piece, it's stunning. Think of your famous comedic actors and when they suddenly do um, like a movie role that's that's serious, it just it's just breathtaking. They ace it. Huh? They nail it. They, oh, they it. it's yeah. it's it's breathtaking. They're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. Um, we were taught that your comedic actors um, are um, you either, I do think you're born with the timing or you're not. You can learn it to some extent, but there's, it, there's just a, a, an innate feel for it. And I, I prefer comedy myself. I, I love it. If you guys know in rehearsal, yeah. I'll stop you and I'll say, give it, give it a beat, give it two beats, and it'll be much funnier. And they do. And if you notice when John Fabiani yeah. has to say, um, I was petrified. And he waits that perfect waits, beat. Yeah. So John can do both. <laughs> he can do comedy and dramatic very well. But if you don't have that timing, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's harder to do drama well. It's hard to do comedy well if you don't have the timing. So, exactly. Yeah. And guys, comedy or drama? I don't. Who wants to go first? Uh, go. I guess I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I have no real preference, but I would absolutely agree with everything you said, 100 percent. Comedy is 100% more difficult because if, for anyone in the audience, feel free, if you've ever seen a dramatic performance and it, God forbid, falls flat, you still say, oh, it's okay. It was a good performance. If you ever see comedy and the joke does not land, mm -hmm. five seconds of silence is the worst feeling you will yeah. ever get oh, as yeah. an actor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And I promise you, it's timing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've never really had experience with comedic performances on my end before, but there's something about drama that gets such, like, it gets such a connection from the actors to the audience, and you walk out of a drama show being like, wow, I really felt that, I really resonated with that, and I love having that effect on people, yeah. and I think that's one of my favorite parts of playing a more dramatic character because Dorothy has some very dramatic moments. Because <laughs> <She does. laughs> I know that there's somewhere there's there's someone watching that show that feels the same way she does right, sometimes. Right. And I feel very similar to Dorothy sometimes too. Sure. You, you, Miss Eccles knows how dramatic I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I have to say drama just because I've never had much experience with comedy before. But I love having a connection between audience members and actors on stage. And I, th I think whether you do comedy or drama, that connection has to be there with the audience. Mm -hmm. If you don't, and then we talk about that a lot in rehearsal, yeah. oh, about yes. how to connect with the audience. You won't really see them, but I promise you, if, if you're delivering a line, you're looking right out there, and the lights are blinding you, um, there'll be 20 people who swear you were talking to them. Yeah. And, but that's, what you, that's how you bring them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
if someone, or I should say, when someone goes to the play, mm -hmm. August third, fourth, and fifth at Lyman Hall, um, and decides they would like to get involved with Wallingford Community Theater, maybe be next year's Dorothy or next year's lead. What's the, what's the process of, of doing that? We we have a Facebook page, we have a website, um, we have an Instagram. We always make things very, very public, very, very accessible. We, we do not, our mission statement includes it. Um, I was for 42 years um, a therapist in hospitals, school systems, um, using the arts as a vehicle. And um, so no one is ever precluded. We want everyone to feel welcome. So we have all kinds of levels. Repertory is probably the most challenging in terms of level and expectations of an actor but um, we've had some brand new people you had never done repertory when you were in our town you know and you did a great job you totally rose to the occasion so it's not preclusive to that but um, we also have like town events um, that we co-sponsor like the Halloween party and parade um, that's kind of a fun way to get involved yes. to help us with that. You two have been Dorothy and Scarecrow for years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and now you finally yes, get to yeah. do it on stage. Which I is think kind that's of one of the reasons why I was so excited when you announced that it would be Wizard of Oz. I'm just like, oh, it was what like, if like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also should mention too, it is wine for your community theater. But you do not have to be a Wallingford resident you to do be not. a member. You do not. You could live you do not. anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. Perfect example, Dorothy. Yes, oh, yeah. uh, I go to Amity High School and I live in Bethany. Um, so it's a bit of a commute, but it is so very worth it. Yeah, I would say probably, at least in the summer, the majority live in town, but um, we always have a lot. When we did Matilda, we had um, Bruce Gordon who drove down yeah. from, um, was it Ellington? For uh, 1776, they came from Litchfield, from Watertown, from you know, way up by the border, um, way up. Island. We're so small, but way up on the border. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have uh, we have less than, than three minutes to go, but let, let me let me start with with the actors. Um, what advice would you give someone who would want to be the next Savannah Gallagher or want to be the next Charlie Forte? Sees your performance and says, you know what, I. I would, I would like to do that. I would like to follow that path. W what advice would you give them? Um, I would say to use theater as an outlet to come out of your shell. Um, and one of the best ways you can do that is through making friends with your castmates. Um, I'm lucky enough to have made some of the best friendships I could ever wish for through these productions over the last few years. Um, I've known Ed since I was very young. Um, and I've just met Charlie, but we are becoming fast friends. Um, but those kind of relationships are ones that are going to last you for a really long time. Yes. And the tighter cast you are, I feel the better show it produce, uh, it produces. And you can, and the audience can really tell that you guys are tight knit if you guys are friends off stage as well. Well said. Thank well you. said. Charlie, can you follow that? <laughs> what advice no. would you give someone who wants to be the next Charlie Forte? No. Uh, so, going off that, there's right away, do it. Yes. There's, there is no judgment. There's no role to either big or too small. Everyone pitches in. We're all friends. Mm -hmm. One of my unexpected friends is, <laughs> is actually our Toto. Yes. <laughs> she's, she's what? Eight, she's she's a, eight, nine? She's a yeah. ball of energy. I love her can do a full split better than anyone I have ever seen, <laughs> and she'll do it in the show, and you better see it. Yes! <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, seriously, do it. It will bring you out of your shell, like Savannah was saying. When I started doing it way back when, I, I'm going to get serious here, I was not happy with myself, and it helped me find what I like to be and what I want to do. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Once again, the Wallingford Community Theater presenting The Wizard of Oz, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Lyman Hall High School. Curtain rises at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $20 general admission, $15 for children and seniors. Tickets available at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Wallingford Town Hall. At the door the night of the performance or online at brownpapertickets.com. 
with the very few seconds remaining, let me just say, Mary Ellen, Charlie, Savannah, I hope you all break a leg uh, <laughs> and Thanks, have a good performance. You too. You too. <laughs> He's coming from the men that are very merely almost did. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, this has been Edward McCarver. We'll see you soon. <laughs>